In a groundbreaking revelation, visionary entrepreneur Elon Musk has unveiled shocking information about the mysterious Euphrates River. His recent statements have sent shockwaves worldwide, leaving us on the edge of our seats, eager to uncover the terrifying truth lurking beneath the surface. So let's dive into the video to know what Elon Musk has warned us about and how it is related to Bible references. Here we begin. The Euphrates River is significant in the Middle East, stretching for about 1,740 miles, 2,800 kilometers. It is the longest river in Southwest Asia and forms part of the Tigris-Euphrates River system. Originating in Turkey, it flows southeast through Syria and Iraq. In ancient times, the Euphrates Valley was extensively irrigated, and many great cities were built along its banks, some of which can still be seen in ruins. Together with the Tigris, it shaped the historical region of Mesopotamia, the Euphrates River is a unique sign connected to the end times and the rapture. History of Euphrates From the ancient Paleolithic to the Chalcolithic periods, the Euphrates Basin in the Fertile Crescent was inhabited by early humans. They left behind stone tools called Aculean artifacts, discovered in the Sajr Basin and the El Kaum Oasis in Syria. Some of these artifacts, along with the remains of Homo erectus, date back 450,000 years. As time passed, permanent villages began to emerge in the Taurus Mountains and the upper part of the Syrian Euphrates Valley. These villages, such as Abu Huraira, Jerf El Amar, Murebet, and Navali Kori, were initially occupied by hunter-gatherers, but later became home to some of the earliest farmers. These communities relied on rain-fed agriculture and were limited to areas where irrigation was unnecessary. Around the 6th millennium BCE, people settled in Lower Mesopotamia, where they introduced irrigation due to inadequate rainfall. Evidence of irrigation has been found at various sites from this period. In northeastern Syria, small villages dotted the landscape during the late Ubayid period, with some growing to significant sizes. In Iraq, sites like Eridu and Ur were already occupied during this time. The Uruk period, which coincided with the 4th millennium BCE, witnessed the emergence of urban settlements across Mesopotamia. As a result, cities like Tel Brak and Uruk grew remarkably and displayed impressive architecture. Trade played a significant role in the region, as evidenced by the spread of Mesopotamian pottery, architecture, and ceilings into Turkey and Iran. Habuba Kabira, situated on the Syrian Euphrates, is considered an Uruk colony and represents the extent of this trading system. Moving into ancient history, the Jemdet Nazar and early dynastic periods saw the growth of settlements in southern Mesopotamia, indicating a population increase. These settlements, organized as city-states, were located along canals of the Euphrates and the Tigris, some of which have dried up but can still be detected through remote sensing. A similar development occurred in Upper Mesopotamia, Subartu and Assyria, albeit on a smaller scale and starting from the mid-3 RD millennium BCE. Sites like Ebla, Mari, and Tel Lalan gained prominence during this period. The Akkadian Empire and Ur-3 empires brought large parts of the Euphrates Basin under a single ruler for the first time. After their decline, the old Assyrian Empire and Mari asserted their authority over northeast Syria and northern Mesopotamia. In southern Mesopotamia, city-states like Isin, Kish, and Larsa ruled until their territories were absorbed by the emerging state of Babylonia under Hammurabi in the early to mid-18th century BCE. During the second half of the second millennium BCE, the Euphrates Basin was divided between various powers. The south was controlled by Kassite Babylon, while the north was divided among Mitanni, Assyria, and the Hittite Empire. Eventually, the Middle Assyrian Empire became the dominant force, surpassing the Hittites, Mitanni, and Kassite Babylonians. After the decline of the Middle Assyrian Empire in the late 11th century BCE, a struggle ensued between Babylonia and Assyria for control of the Iraqi Euphrates Basin. The Neo-Assyrian Empire emerged as the victor and gained control of the basin's northern and southern parts in the first half of the first millennium BCE. Over the centuries, the wider Euphrates Basin saw a shift in control from the Neo-Assyrian Empire to the Median Empire, followed by the Neo-Babylonian Empire, and eventually the Achaemenid Empire. 
Alexander the Great later conquered the Achaemenid Empire and ended in Babylon in 323 BCE. In subsequent times, the region came under the rule of the Seleucid Empire, Parthian Empire, Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, and Sassanid Empire until the Islamic conquest in the mid-7th century AD. The Battle of Karbala, a significant event, occurred near the Euphrates banks in 680 AD. In the modern era, after World War I, the borders in Southwest Asia were redrawn, and the riparian states of the Euphrates had to reach agreements on water usage and hydraulic installations. As a result, dams were constructed by Turkey and Syria on the Euphrates, leading to tensions and crises over water flow, particularly during droughts. However, the countries eventually reached agreements and treaties to manage water resources. During the Syrian Civil War and the Iraqi Civil War, the Euphrates was controlled by the Islamic State from 2014 until 2017, when the terrorist group was defeated territorially in Syria and Iraq. What did Elon Musk say, and how does it signify the biblical prophecies of end times? Elon Musk has recently issued a warning about the potential drying up of the Euphrates River, and this has significant global implications. The Euphrates River holds historical importance and is a natural landmark of great significance. Interestingly, Musk's statements align with events mentioned in the Bible, indicating that extensive research has already been conducted on these matters. According to biblical prophecies, the Euphrates River will dry up in the last days, making way for the passage of the kings of the east. This river acts as a massive barrier, hindering any army from advancing from east to west. With its enormous length of over 1,800 miles and an average width of 300 yards, the Euphrates River has been a vital source of life in the region. Moreover, in the Bible, the drying up of the Euphrates River is described as the sixth bowl judgment during the tribulation period. According to Revelation 16:12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This prophecy reveals the judgment itself and explains its purpose, to allow a great army from the east to cross the Euphrates without obstacles. Following this, the kings of the earth gather at a place known as Armageddon. It is at this point that Jesus returns, and the battle fought at Armageddon will result in the destruction of all God's enemies. The drying up of the Euphrates River is a significant event leading up to Armageddon. Although the Bible does not explicitly mention who the kings of the East are, biblical scholars and theologians have various interpretations. One commonly held view is that they represent the rise of powerful political and economic entities in Asia, including China. In Revelation 9, 16, 18, John predicts that these kings of the East will have a standing army of 200 million. This was a remarkable prophecy, considering that the global population was not even close to 200 million at the time of writing. However, today, China indeed possesses an army of over 200 million, just as the Bible predicted. And focusing on the biblical prophecy, the kings of the East, whatever they may be, play a significant role in the end times and will be involved in the final battles before Jesus' return. But first, they must cross the Euphrates River on their way to Armageddon, the valley where these battles will occur. Recent news reports have highlighted the drying up of the Euphrates River, which aligns with biblical prophecies. A study by the University of Arizona reveals that the river's flow has decreased by over 60% in the past century due to human activities such as dam construction and irrigation projects in Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. This has led to water shortages and negatively impacted the lives of people who rely on the river for farming and fishing. The fulfillment of this prophecy serves as a clear sign that we must be prepared for the return of Jesus. As Matthew 24, 44 reminds us, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The drying up of the Euphrates River is a significant event that calls us to remain vigilant and spiritually prepared for the future. So what do you think of Elon Musk's warning about the Euphrates and the fulfillment of prophecy for the Euphrates? Comment below and subscribe for more.